The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the May Day, the May 1st, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life, life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating. To you and I, just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, We've got you covered. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. If you would be so kind to put a radio show question in the subject heading, of course, in our Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, we've got a flat market, and that's really to be, I would say, expected, anticipated with the Fed releasing their um, – Decision, whatever decision that might be, at 2 o'clock with, um, with testimony or Q&A period um, coming afterwards around uh, 2.30. So really what uh, the interpretation of what the markets are doing, and we'll go through the charts, but, but quite frankly, and I don't say this normally, but quite frankly right now between 1 and 2, it's pretty much useless. It's really going to be about the end of day. So we'll take a look at what the end of day numbers might be. That way, uh, whether you're listening live or you're listening to an archive version on Tiger TV, uh, you'll be able to have some data points to go ahead and take a look at uh, how the market has responded and how it is that you can interpret its message. So I, I, you know, I don't want to get too caught up in the short-term time frame charts right now or a any of the equity charts, really metals or bonds or, or anything, because things are are potentially going to change out there. But nonetheless, right now we've got the Dow up 11 points. The S&P is flat. It's off 42 cents. NASDAQ 100 being powered by Apple, which is up 13 bucks. Uh, so the NDX 100 is up 42. Of course, the uh, Dow, um, a lot of points to the upside in the Dow as a result of Apple being up 13 bucks. I'm going to guess 70, 75 points, something like that. I don't have a conversion system out here. Um, you've got the uh, Wilshire 5000. That's off 11 bucks. Tranny's uh, off 1%. They're down 109 points out here. Spot volatility index. Now, that's one thing that you and I are going to take a look at today, especially with regard to where it finishes. Now, it's up 27 cents. That's 2%, trading at 13.30. Uh, getting awfully close, flirting with that 50-day exponential moving average line out there. And uh, if we take a uh, look at uh, what's moving to the upside, you've got Rogers Corp. That's 25.55. Timothy Plan, not sure what that is, but it's up 2,409%. Must be an IPO. That's a heck of a day out there. You got L3 Technologies up 15. Strategic Education. I'm going to guess what ED stands for. It could stand for something else, but we're going to go with the education. Uh, of course, it could be strategic. Ah, we won't touch that. Uh, but it's up 9% out there. To the downside, Google off 23. MGP Ingredients has some bad ingredients today, down 23% or 20 bucks. Uh, Google's off, uh, well, I said they were off 17. Uh, MicroStrategy down 6.5% or 9 bucks in change. So where do we want to begin? Where do we want to begin? Let's let's begin here. The spot volatility index. P perhaps the one, the one tool that you'll be able to utilize to get an, uh, a feel 
for what the message of the market is come 4 o'clock today. And so here what we have on, March, on, on this chart, the top panel of this chart is the S&P 500. So we're looking at the S&P cash indice. We're looking at the spot volatility index. That's at the bottom. Now, one of the things that you identified, rightfully so, uh, at the beginning of the week on Monday, you had noticed this uh, rising bottoms pattern in the spot volatility index. And what I mean by that, I'm referring to, I'm starting with the day here. You, you correctly picked out April 12th as the so-called low uh, on a closing basis in the spot fix index. That was at 12.01. He danced to the next real low out here. Well, that was on April 18th on a closing basis, 12.09. Now, at the same time that that was going on, what we had was we had price rising inside the S&P 500. It's very easy to see the rising price direction in the S&P 500. That's the top panel of the screen. It's a little bit, um, it takes a little bit more work to identify that you had a rising bottoms pattern, but you did it out there because on the trading session of April 23rd, 1228 was the number. So slightly rising and then really rising since then. But you see the slightly rising and really rising since then with the S&P 500 going north out here, you can look at my screen and see those other green line divergences in the S&P 500 and the spot volatility index. It always has meaning. It is always a um, it is always a, uh, a signal as to something to come. That something is some type of retracement. Now, the pattern can get negated. We haven't had that some type of retracement uh, that, uh, uh, that, that I've been able to see out here. So the pattern is still in effect. Now, when this pattern really gets rocking and or rolling, in this case here, this is telling us a retracement. It gets beyond retracement when you see the spot volatility index close over its 50-day exponential moving average. Now, that number, as we speak right now, is 1415. Again, we're trading at 1342. You know, it changes by the second out here, by the tick. But uh, watch 1415 at the end of the day. Now, I'm not saying right now. It's just a warning signal. It's I, I have learned over time you can't trade off this. You have to be able to use other patterns and tools in order to be able to trade off of this. So you're going to want to watch this because it's going to help. If if the spot volatility index closes below the 50-day exponential moving average, it's going to tell you that, hey, the market is not uh, – there's still plenty of liquidity. I'd rather just use it like this. Uh, you and I, at least during this 1 to 2 p.m. show, we never refer to this as the X gauge out there. And the reason that we don't is because it's useless to refer to it that way. There's no trading strategy or anything that you and I can do to interpret what the market is doing out here. So what we can do is we can use that. We can also take a look at, uh, we can look at the S&P 500, but I choose at this stage here to look at the ES Mini. And uh, we're going to take a look at the ES Mini, and we're going to take a look at the patterns that are out here. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice right now as we speak at 114, um, we don't have a bearish reversal signal out here. But who cares? This is a daily chart. That means that uh, we need to see when the contract closes later this afternoon what type of candle we have. But here's what we know. We know inside the ES Mini, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. How do we know that? Because my system automatically draws that out there because it's one of the single best tools that any of us could use for any time frame, any instrument that we trade out there. It helps us to identify tops. Right now, it's just a potential top. But the ES Mini is also singing in the key of G. That's wave number seven. You know, that's the wave where during the ball game, you get up and you sing. So sing during this break, and I'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So hopefully you were uh, singing, take me out to the ballpark, and uh, we'll see whether or not the markets want to uh, take the markets out to the ballpark or to the uh, shed. And we'll know that perhaps by the end of the day. So we have out here, uh, we're taking a look at the ES Mini. One, you can see an A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, price has made it beyond the one-to-one -one level. That was 29.29. You can see here along the way, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, there was never a bearish reversal candle. You see, that whole A to B equals CD thing, you can go ahead and sell the D point or buy the D point if you want, uh, but you'll get crushed over the long haul if that becomes your pattern. What you need to do is you need to make sure that the market, the market will go ahead and communicate to you when the pattern is complete. It doesn't mean that things can't get turned around, but what you want to do is you want to, uh, our role, my role here, is to interpret the charts and tell you what buyers and sellers are doing. It is simple as that. It is really not to inflect my opinions. What I give you as far as information out here is here's the pattern we're looking at, here's what we're looking for, and then here's what action you could consider taking. Remember, this is a daily time frame chart. A daily time frame chart may or may not really impact any trading decisions for that you have for your longer term accounts out there. Hey, for those, you might want to look at the weekly and the monthly. But let's just focus on the daily time frame chart out here. What needs to happen? What really needs to happen at the end of the day, in order for the many folks that want to just get bearish out here, look, I don't care whether you want to get bearish or bullish, just the interpretation of the chart itself. You need to see some type of bearish reversal candle at day's end. You could get a bearish in golf, and you could get a several different candles out here. I just want you to know right now we don't have it. But if you were to get one, along with a close above the spot volatility, it's above the 50-day exponential moving average, then the next thing that you would be looking for or anticipating is a final level of support. 
And inside the ES Mini, that's why we're taking a look at the equity futures contract, well, it's quite a ways down. So you would have to make a decision before price gets there. Here is the June contract for the ES Mini. And these are the daily profiles that are out here. Now, when and what you will notice, or what you should notice in taking a look at this, and we can go look at all other contracts, what you should notice is all pullbacks or retracements out here have found support where they should have. In other words, all retracements, and people might have thought that was the end of the world, that was the end of the rally, the end of the counter trend rally. Well, as we know, that's wrong. That is not a correct uh, um, assessment. The only way that's going to happen as you will see on this move up here, is if price closes underneath the bottom of a daily profile. These are hidden. They're not hidden because they're on my chart, and now they're on your screen, and you can at least take down the numbers here. But if you take a look at the first real pullback and test of support, it took place on the dates of February 7th and February the 8th out here. It's really the role of price to always come back and test support and then to communicate to you and I, hey, if that support holds, then the Trend has not changed out there for whatever the time period is. Here, we're using a daily time frame. If we take a look at the trading day of March the 8th, it might have looked like it was curtains out there because there was a bearish reversal candle on March the 4th. That was a key reversal session out there. That could have been the end of it. That's why I'm going through this. So I don't want you to, I want you to be able to correctly assess and interpret the market out here and what it's doing. And that should have been the end of it. But you see, when it's so-called the end of it, in this case here, the end of the move higher, when a bearish signal shows up on the screen, all it means is that price is going to go back or should go back and test support. It's not until we see the results of that test of support that we can really draw a conclusion. So you had that top. You had even a bearish structured daily profile back here. And what I'm referring to, let me just go ahead and put the uh, rectangle around it. Here's the rectangle right there. So that's what we're talking about. And you can see that price just pulled back in a test of that level. Yeah, intraday can get underneath it, but it's always going to be about the end of the day. If you use a daily chart, it's about the end of the day. We saw several times out here where we saw tests of support. March 25th was one of them. You saw it two days later on the 27th. You saw it on the 28th. Price always close back above the bottom of that profile. You can see right now that price is trading above the top of the profile. And so hence, I don't know why I use the word hence, but hence, even if we do get a bearish reversal candle in the ES today, the real key is going to be, will price take out 2894.50? because that is the bottom of the profile. We're above the top right now support. Level one support is 29.29. Level two support is 29.09. I'm, I'm getting rid of the ticks that are out there. And then level three or the final level, the key level, quite frankly, the most important level is the bottom of that profile, and that's 28.94. So if you get a bearish reversal signal today and you've decided, or maybe you are in a short position, what you want to be able to watch is what happens as price gets to 28.94. I have no new profiles that are forming, uh, at least not yet, not as of 1.23 in the afternoon. And so I think that the the what we've just covered here, what we just took a look at, the spot volatility index, the rising bottoms pattern that it has, the rising price pattern that it has, it can extend itself for a long period of time out there. So there are clues. They're just clues of potential. Now what we have to really see is what buyers and sellers are going to do with the information. And then it becomes easy for you and I to make a, um, a logical uh, decision out there, at least be able to anticipate where price might head to. Now, we have a question that came in, so I, I just wanted to go ahead and, and, and uh, make sure that we, we, f we completely covered that area. Uh, didn't leave you there. But we've got a question that's coming here from Art. And Art wants to take a look at the unleaded gas or the ETF UGA. So let's go ahead and put UGA out here. What I'm not certain of is what, just the question is, what's the outlook? So again, let's look at the charts out here. So what do we know about the ETF? And Art, what you and I are also going to do is we're going to go take a look at the uh, gasoline uh, futures contract. Uh, but if we take a look at the patterns that are out here, here one of the things that you can see is prices moving higher doing with less relative energy out there. And it was doing that into the trading session. Oops, let me go here. It was doing that into the trading session of the date is uh, April the 23rd. But as price was making that move, and it was a gap to the upside, it was doing it with less energy. And when you do it with less energy, it's never the first high that's the problem. It's always the following high and how it is made.
and how you don't want to make a high, not you, but a chart, okay? It doesn't want to make a high by doing a less route of energy. Now, it can come back and it can resolve that, but during that time period, during that time period, if you get some type of bearish reversal signal, Art, what that's telling you is you've got some type of short-term top in place. And you got that bearish reversal signal on April 27th when you saw a gap to the downside. We've seen here over the past couple of days, even including today interest session, we saw a price move up towards a resistance level. These two little blue dashed lines out here as well, Stevie's green line, the oscillator and change line. By the way, that price point is 33.11. Trading at 32.47. So right now, what this is telling us, UG on a daily basis, is that there's a top. But just like we looked at for the ES Mini, the rules are the same. You see, what you and I look at instrument-wise, we're agnostic to. It doesn't matter. The patterns remain the same. So in our case. It wants to have a uh, what's our outlook on it? Well, let's go see what the outlook is for uh, unleaded gas gasoline futures out here, and where does price need to close below in order to change its trend? Now, this almost is like we're looking at the ES mini chart out here. Price is above the top of its daily profile. That's at 2.03. The key level of support, if this is a change in trend, Art, that number, 1.9858 to take it out to full decimal points out there. That's the level you would watch for to make a determination where there's really a change in trend in UGA. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back. Uh, so 30 minutes be to go before the real fireworks uh, begin uh, as the market interprets and churns around uh, uh, whatever the Fed's decision is. But really, it's probably not till around 3.30 or so before it would really be clear. Uh, certainly 4 o'clock uh, when you can take a look at what's going on in the cash uh, markets out here. The Dow's up 20 points. The S&P totally flat right now. Now, what's not flat is silver. Silver's down 1.7%. That's down uh, 25 cents, trading out at 16.45. So why don't we take a peek in on silver and try to identify uh, where key levels of support are here. And we're going to take a look at the daily time frame chart. And so we're looking at the July contract for silver, trading out at 14.74. And what you're going to notice on the screen is you're going to notice both the daily and the weekly profiles. And so what you can see here is that the uh, silver is pulling back to 14. The bottom of its weekly profile is 14.66 out here. Now, I'm also going to put in my synthetic contract, which may identify different profiles. And that's not with the intent of confusing you, but we've had a recent rollover in the contract for silver. And uh, the, the data on the left-hand side is very limited out here. It's very scarce. And so if you use limited data, you know, it's less reliable. Uh, for being able to churn out information. So instead of doing that, what I can do is I can come over here, and for this I've got a, more of a synthetic or composite contract. You'll notice here, when I open up this chart, we go back as far as we want, and now I've got all kinds of data that I can use to be able to analyze what's going on inside the market. Now, luckily for us at this stage here, the weekly profile comes out to be the same, and that's at 1466 so the key level, so at this stage here, we can see the A to B equals CD to the downside. It does not look like it's completed. Let's try to get that price projection. Now, I'm referring to the A point that I'm going to use here would be the swing from October 20th. Then I'm going to use my B point. I'm going to use the uh, March 7th level. And then for my C point, I'm going to be using March 21st. We can see the one-to-one a to B equals CD pattern would uh, give you a price projection price projection of 1442. 1407 is a 1.272. Uh, so how will we know if price wants to get down there? Well, if you see it close below 1466, PDG, pretty darn good chance what we're going to see is a uh, move in one of these uh, to, to one of these A to B equals CD points. Now, at the 1442-ish area, really between the 1 and the 1.272, you get down into the lows from November of 2018 out there. So, you know, can we totally make an inter Right now, support is held. So that much we know. Uh, even though it looks like there's a breakdown, and there is a breakdown from the daily time frame chart. And uh, we've got uh, two, we've got a close that is certainly well below that area. Um, no bullish signal of any sort that I can see in looking at this uh, chart. But that's what's going on with silver. Different than if we take a look at gold. Let's go take a look at the June contract here for gold. It's off a of buck seventy. Twelve eighty four is the number. If we take a look at profiles here, the key level for gold uh, is going to be the bottom, which is twelve seventy seven twenty. Now you'll notice at this point. And this point, meaning 1.33 in the afternoon, the bar has turned orange. It, it is trying to form new profiles out here, but really we won't know whether that's going to occur until tonight, early in the morning. Um, uh, but, it's, but it's trying to. There's no information that you and I can use from this. Uh, what we can do is we can, we can say that if price closed under 1277.20, then support will have been broken. It will be clear. In fact, support on a daily basis has been broken uh, ever since the um, March the 1st level. The question is, do we have some type of bottom pattern that's in place? So from the A to B equals CD side out here, the A point, B point, C point, C point, by the way, was March 25th. You'll see the one-to-one -one completion is at 1262. One-to-one point 272 is 1243. By the way, if silver, or about that silver, but if gold makes that move to the downside, and right now, I don't have any reason to believe that it will, right? It's trading above support. But if it were, then uh, it would be setting up a nice, or potentially setting up a nice Gartley buy pattern at one of these price projection areas out here. So we'll, um, what, what's there to do? Look, right now, with regard to silver, it's holding support. It happens to be the weekly profile. In the case of gold, it's holding support. It happens to be the daily time frame, time frame 
profile. And so that's what's going on in the precious metals area. But what we can also do is we can go take this and we can try to assess what's going on inside of the GDX. So let's go take a look at the GDX. And the GDX right now is trading out at $20.64. What do we know about the GDX at 135? Well, we know that if the GDX closes under 2084, 2084 is a bullish structured profile. So this is all going to be about the end of the day. And that, what that means in the bullish structured profile is this. This is nothing more than a football game. And it's easy for me to take a look at this as a football game. And the football game where you have two opponents out here, buyers and sellers are what I'm going to call the teams. And we know where buyers are lined up. In fact, that buyers in the bullish structured box, that's the A team. What do I mean? This is all, all the first stringers of buyers in the GDX are between the price level of 2084 and 2101. And that should hold. And if price closes below that and you're along the mining sector, hopefully you can find some other bottoming pattern that is a reason to stay in there. Now, this is just the daily time frame. If price were to close below 2084, what you and I would do is go look to the weekly time frame to see where its profile is. So let's just do that real quickly. Well, that happens to be 2057. So what we can say here between 2084, okay, Support has been broken on a daily basis, intraday. Where has it fallen to? It's fallen to support of the weekly profile. Again, 2057. The low so far today has been 2056. So just like you and I can reach a conclusion about gold and silver that they've held support, we're going to just use the daily and the weekly time frames to help us assist with that, so too has the GDX. But if we see a close below 2057, so we'll change that number, from 2084 to 2057, boy, you should have a really good reason, I mean a really good reason, to be long mining. Now, if you are a, a risk individual and you want to try to uh, get into something uh, before the uh, Fed announces it, well, then now's the time for the GDX or gold or silver that have held support. And you close those trades out if they uh, break support come day's end out here. I am not suggesting that. As we take a look at the, the role of just understanding where support is and when support breaks, where is price going to go? And let's take a look at where else is it that price would go to inside the GDX? Well, let's go take a look at its A to B equals CD pattern. Let's go ahead and, you know, what would we do here? So for me, because here's, here's the one A point that somebody could use. Um, and that would be the uh, trading session from February 20th. But see how price came all the way back up to that swing point on March 26th? Not really an A to B equals CD. If anything, it would be a consolidation pattern that was out there, which we could do. So for the A to B equals CD pattern out here, for the daily time frame for the GDX, I would be using the March 26th level as my A point. And I would use the low of April 4th, and I would use the high of April 10th. And what we can see here is price is right now below the 1.272 area. And that would say its next target, 2036. Or it could be a 1 to 2 A to B equals CD to the downside. And that would be 1975. Now, volume today, 16 million shares. The swing point that it is dealing with, the most recent one, had volume of about 48 million shares. So you've got light volume. Here's how we're going to sum it up. Price is at support, period. End of story, even though it's broken on the daily. We'll go with the weekly here. But if there's a close below 2057 in the GDX... Well, probably silver and gold are trading below support as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got a request here to go take a look at the Apple. The question is, where does it look like Apple is headed to? So we begin by taking a look at, first, where's Apple trading daily, weekly, monthly? Is it above our resistance levels? And for this case here, for resistance levels, what you and I are using uh, are the uh, daily, weekly, and monthly profiles. In fact, we've even got the quarterly profiles out here on the very right-hand screen. So today, with price getting above, Long it closed above 208.48. It's taken out its daily resistance, a brand new profile that formed a couple of days ago. Uh, that was at 208.48. On the weekly, the uh, it's trading well above the top of resistance. That was 176.71. And uh, last month, the month of uh, April, right? Today's May Day out here. Price closed over the top of that profile as well, and that was 197.86. So at this stage here, everything looks bullish when we take a look at Apple. Now, Apple does have some resistance out here, um, and that resistance level was established by a gap to the downside. So let's go take a look and see if price has tested that, and it hasn't yet. So 216.81. The other level would be the bottom of the gap, or would be the high of the candle session from November 2nd. So that's where we saw the gap to the downside, and that's 213.65, or 213.90. So what Apple is doing is it's trading into resistance. By the way, from a volume standpoint, that move to the downside was 91 million shares. We're 42 million shares right now. It's kind of neck and neck. It's pretty close to a similar type of volume. So I don't know whether it's going to be light or not, but price is trading right now into a potential resistance area. What happens if price closes above 213.65 and hasn't tested 216.81? Well, odds favor, doesn't guarantee, excuse me, odds favor that price is going to go test the 216.81. What happens if over the coming days price closes above 216.81? Well, then that window, that gap to the downside, that natural resistance level, will it fail to act as resistance? If anything, old resistance could be or should come, uh, should become new support out there. So what Apple is doing, um, Jim, is it's trading right into a resistance point. This would not be where one would go ahead and add to a position out here. If we take a look at what Apple's also doing, so the move higher today has been with less relative energy. When I say less relative energy, I'm referring back to the energy level that it uh, had in place on April 24th, 
when it had created a nice little shooting star candle out there. Now, there's no bearish reversal candle, anything along those lines. It's just a warning signal as we speak. There's no levels of support that have been broken out here. But it is something to uh, keep our eye on over the coming days with regard to candle configuration. Now, when Apple pulled back all the way down here, by the way, on January 3rd, when it formed its bottom, it, gen it generated that Rhodes momentum indicator pattern out there. That's why we pay attention to them both at the top and the bottom. This is how you sell tops and you buy bottoms, as opposed to, you know, buying low and selling high, which is virtually useless. Useless instructions out there. We want to buy bottoms and buy tops, and so we want to use different patterns to assist us in identifying uh, those types of markers on a chart so that we can see the change in um, psychology of the uh, market. Now, in addition to moving back to that level on January 3rd, what Apple was also doing, it was testing a support level. That support level was its uh, Tom DeMarc setup trend line. That's that red solid line. I can't tell you why this works. I can't. The reason why it works is because what this TD setup nine count system does is identifies a breakout because it just simply says, you know what, in order to have the energy on a weekly basis, the monthly basis, this is a monthly chart out here, to have nine consecutive months where the close on a monthly basis is above the close of a bar four bars earlier, takes a lot of energy to do. And when it does that, it tells you where the breakout was. On a gap to the upside or the downside tells you where the breakout or breakdown was, and price can often pull back. That's why gaps get filled. All it really means is price is pulling back to a breakdown or a breakout area. In this case here, this is the breakout area, and price pulled right down into it. And so that, combined with what was going on in the daily time frame chart, um, was uh, was was really a great buying signal if you were following Apple and you were utilizing uh, these different tools that you and I use here between one and two o'clock in the afternoon. Now, if price is able to close above two sixteen eighty one, Jim. Then what we would be targeting is the TDST resistance line. Now, I've switched from the monthly to a weekly because there wasn't a resistance line on the monthly chart out here. But there were nine consecutive closes during that time period where the close was lower than the close four bars earlier. So what this does is if price can clear the resistance, right, it's coming back to a level where it broke down. If that breakdown fails because bulls are able to close above that, then what that signals to you is that price should go test and get up to that other resistance level, the breakdown level, on a weekly basis. And that price point, I'm trying to give it to you. There we go. It is 224.23. So we take a look at the weekly time frame charts, we take a look at the daily time frame charts, we take a look at the monthly time frame charts for Apple. It's pushing into a resistance area. That doesn't mean that it's going to fall apart here, but I would say it's not where you would be adding. I also would not be selling the position if I held it. You would want to wait until you got a close below the daily profile, 199.06, just we like we looked at with regard to uh, a gasoline, the gasoline futures contract. But we use the ETF, and the reason that we use both of them is because the ETF is going to take its message from the actual physical underlying instrument. Now, I don't know with inside that ETF which contracts it is that is inside there, so you'd want to go uh, take a look at that. But we just simply use the current active contract for gasoline futures to make a decision about whether there was a change in trend on the ETF. And in this case here for Apple, we would say a close below the daily profile would be that signal too. That is 199.06. So I hope that helps you out. Let me see if there's any other requests as we have about two minutes left in this segment. And then we've got the two minute wrap. So no other requests that have come in. You know, we looked at the ES mini and just kind of keep some perspective here. And so we have potential topping patterns in place. We just don't have the actual signal and confirmation out there, the daily reversal candle. If we take a look at the NQ, we take a look at Apple out here, we can see that price is moving higher with less relative energy. It's got that potential top that's out there. It's already formed a top by creating that TD setup nine count where the high came in the day following that, and it happens to be a bearish reversal candle. So I would tell you, close above that says, hey, guess what? That pattern failed. It hasn't failed just yet. 
So this has topping signals, whether it's today or not, but it has topping signals in it. If we take a look at the uh, Dow, look at the Dow Equity Futures contract. What has it done? Well, it generated a three drive to a top signal back about two, four, five days ago. A uh, price today rejecting Stevie's red line thus far, as well as that pattern. So that topping pattern is still in play out here. That's why today's close is going to be so important, at least being able to assist you with what the market's intentions are. And if we take a look at the Russell 2000, to finish out the last few seconds of this segment here, what do we see? We see the consolidation. We can see price is not broken above the consolidation. We can see that price is moving higher, doing less route of energy, and yesterday was a dark cloud cover candle. All of this suggests that the Russell 2000 wants to continue the consolidation and go ahead and pull back. But we won't reach that conclusion until later this afternoon. So right now, 10 minutes before the release of the Fed minutes out there, you've got the Dow up 19 points, that's flat. The S&P up 95 cents, that's flat. The NDX 100 up a half a percent, not flat, but Apple's performance out there, it's probably below flat, really. And the Russell 2000 up two points. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of tfnn.com don't let gold's next big run pass you by sign up today you know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, folks. So we got two questions here during the two-minute uh, countdown. Uh, the first is, uh, the question was, what's my take on the NASDAQ uh, composite sawing right here around the 81.33 level? We're trading 81.20 right now. And so I have a monthly time frame chart for the NASDAQ composite on my screen. You'll see a bunch of horizontal lines out here. These are the monthly horizontal trading range boundary lines. Now, that's a tool and it's a system that was, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, created by uh, Bud Rolfe. I took that um, application and automated it, and it's a different system than uh, what he uses. And you'll see some numbers along the side out here. And it's these numbers along the side that really generate for us what those horizontal trading range is are. And the largest number of either opens or closes occurred between the price points of 2090 and 1589 all the way down here at the bottom once you have that gap so to speak that price differential all you have to do is just add that number to it and that identifies levels of support or resistance so price in the nasdaq composite has stalled where it should have because of something that took place all the way back uh, maybe about um well this is based upon all the data that i have from 1996 going forward. And so it uh, it price is stalled where it should have stalled. So 8105 is actually that uh, monthly horizontal trading range number. Yes, price has tested the 8133 and it's rejected. It's made 100% move of a move, um, but it's in a normal, natural place to stall. I don't know if price is going to jettison over this or not, but it's at a place where it should have stalled anyways. Now look, on a monthly basis, a close above 8105 says 8606 is the next number that's out there. So I uh, can't interpret anything more than price is stalled where it should have. And now we have to wait on the daily chart for reversal signals and things of that sort. The last question was, hey, Steve-O, um, Qualcomm is going to be out with earnings after the bell. What's my take? Look, you've got resistance at 88.63. That's a daily profile. Uh, I wouldn't be shorting it. It's got, uh, you know, huge signs of strength out here. Um, but I wouldn't be going long either. Why? You've got a TD setup nine count pattern in the daily time frame. You've got a TD setup nine count pattern in the weekly time frame. Watch the level of 82.31 and 72.83. If there's a pullback, you're looking at 7283. Folks, have a great Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow.